Who is he? A cynical swindler who has to be stopped, or simply an honest man who calls a spade a spade? Gentlemen, the thing is we still live in the mindset of Soviet slaves. Someone says Mavrodi is fraud, and everyone repeats a third like. If anyone says Mavrodi is an angel, then everybody will do the same. Hold on, I've listened to you, don't interrupt me. The scam artist of the 90s, Sergei Mavrodi, plundered a huge. You do watch TV, don't you? But do you believe everything you see? You could do something real, you know? But what happened to a dream? See, it's the basic notion that a human cannot be bound. Sergei Mavrodi recorded a video message to chief executives of the state. The founder of the financial pyramid, MMM, asked Vladimir Putin to teach his party fellows to mind their tongues. I told you, Mavrodi is a smart man. I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. Thomas Jefferson. I want to destroy the world financial structure. I consider it unfair. I want to arrange the financial apocalypse, and I will make it. Sergei Mavrodi conquers Ukraine. His project MMM 2011 rapidly gains in popularity. Absolutely nothing can stop me. I think I'm right. Neither the deputies of Verkhovna Rada nor the Russian bailiffs can do anything with the new pyramid. The new massive project, the new pyramid called MMM. In Kazakhstan, MMM 2011 only begins its activity, and very soon. As the managers of the new pyramid say, advertising Mavrodi's new offspring will embrace every city in the country. He's back, and seems like this time for good. Well, the global revolution is underway. I think it's already obvious to everyone, the majority tries to deny it, but it's clear to everybody. The system already has several million people and billions of dollars. The non-stop flow of volunteers to bring Mavrodi their money does not run out. We have managed to provide the work of the system that functions way better than any other state institution. The realist, Sergei Mavrodi in the flesh, is in line with us. The man who declared war on the system, the government. Today, I would say what you've created is awesome. And I've just said that it's an organization without any structure, which allocates responsibility to the whole pyramid, so it turns out it doesn't end with you. The money doesn't come to you. But in large, as we've mentioned, you can already earn money from all the talk shows, because the most desired guest by today's rave, today's program, the business radio, the most desired guest of all talk shows, greetings to you. And today our guest is the man who's brought up this model to its logical conclusion, simplified it, and is using it. We welcome our guest, Sergei Mavrodi. Good afternoon, Sergei Pentelevich. Thank you that you've agreed to answer our questions. Good afternoon. Sergei Mavrodi. Sergei Pentelevich, please tell us if it's not a secret. This training suit, the sneakers, is it an image of a businessman of the future or an underground millionaire? Unfortunately, I've got nothing else anymore, nothing else to wear. Everything was confiscated by bailiffs, I have nothing left. Sergei Pantelevich Mavrodi interprets the new MMM as we can do a lot. And here's what he promises. I change people, I change society. The pyramid is only an instrument for this purpose. And people themselves within the system of MMM are changing, participating in the system. People keep on changing for the better. It's an amazing fact, but that's the way it is. MMM 1994 was destroyed by the government. It's no secret and in the files of my criminal case there are reports by the governors to the president Yeltsin about how everything was going on destroying MMM. It is simply a proved fact that MMM was destroyed artificially on purpose. I was told quite plainly, Sergei Pantelevich, how could we not have arrested you? Should there have been a couple of months more and in the country there would have been neither a president nor anything else, there would be only Sergei Pantelevich Mavrodi and it was unacceptable. The choice had to be made, whether myself or the government, because when the government first ran on me, I said, okay, you watch. And I dealt shortly with them. I said, I'm going to arrange a referendum. And by law, a referendum could solve any severe political issues. It required a million signatures and I was going to collect them in a week, after which I would make them all go to hell. The president and the government, whoever's in there just by posing an issue on the trust. And then I would announce to everyone that MMM's interests are the ones of Russia. I could become a president in no time, without any obstacles. I'm just the kind of person who likes to spend time at home, but I probably should have become one. And no one had any doubt. Who could have brought me under control? 
I myself was going to set everyone under control. What do you mean? No. You are a dangerous man in terms of government. Again, it was a war. It simply was a common war and the war is always dangerous. When you get involved in games like this, you have to understand what it is. For example, Khodorkovsky. I simply wonder at this foolishness. Some say Khodorkovsky was at war with the government. What war are you talking about? He just had funds that were arrested and funds are nothing but accounts and figures. Even if you have a hundred billion on your account, tomorrow they can be arrested and you won't have anything. That's it. You can't carry on a war with just money. And I had an army of depositors. That was a war. They had aces and I had my own ones. We are the people who can change the world. We change the world. We change the world. All over Russia. All over the world. All over the continents. In Europe. Asia. On the other hand, I have 8% of Gazprom stocks. It's all said in my criminal case. And again, it's all legal, it's not a violation of law. I'm always accused of dodging the law. What are they talking about? Did I abide by the law or not? And there's no such thing as dodging. The question is whether I kept the law or not. And I did keep the law. Dodging is from the evil. Matter of factually, even though the authorities claim that I'm such a swindler and a villain and that I deceived everyone, in fact everything's the other way around. No one is interested in me doing payouts. By the way, nobody obliges me to do that. Because I've got mine in prison and I don't owe anything to anybody by the law. Technically, those Gazprom stocks are mine. I could just take them and head for some warm islands and have no worries. But since I've declared that I'm going to pay back, no one likes the situation. Only imagine that I now suddenly get down to paying out in Russia. What's gonna happen when there's total poverty and breakdown and I suddenly start giving out money? I promptly turn into a political figure of the state scale. Who needs it? No one does. And as to depositors, no one cares about them. The journalist Marina made an investigation that when the SWAT came they sealed the office and took out 17 trucks of cash, okay? And not a single truck made it to the bank. Where are those trucks? The officials stole it and split it, alright? I've publicly announced about launching MMM 2011 in the beginning of this year. All the officials and deputies spoke on that. Why haven't they stopped me? Why did they allow that there is now over 30 million participants and all is going well? Why am I not in prison? But instead I'm answering your questions, smiling and joking. Why is that? You know, that's quite a question. I would actually forward it. Why isn't he in prison? So since you think it's a scam, why hasn't I been stopped? So that's the question. If you're doing the same thing that you went to jail for, why aren't you doing your time yet? I'm wondering myself. Sergei Mavrodi as well as myself, we both wonder why he's not in prison yet. <laughs> it's not your freaking business, because you don't know anything and don't understand a damn thing. It was the news of the week. Screw that. You're asking me questions which tell that you haven't read a thing. Why have you come here then? You don't know what it's all about. You say such foolish things that tell us you don't understand what you're talking about whatsoever. Everyone perceives it in a manner that it's quite clear to everybody intuitively that one can steal in this case. And the situation that one doesn't want to steal evokes amazement and no one believes it. Is our society really that sick? I don't violate the law, the rest doesn't bother me. My motives are on the other level. Totally moral. I've got to do this because it is my civic duty. And it's the only reason. It's not about money. I think that if I can help people, I must do it. I reckon it as my civic duty, and I consider myself to be right, and absolutely nothing can stop me. Man of deceived investors. He's a fraud, and he deserved what he got. I have never deceived anyone, neither do I deceive now. I honestly say that this is a pyramid. You can lose your money. There are certain risks, no guarantees, no promises. What's the crime here? It is bankers who are the real fraud and swindlers, and they're the ones to send to jail. What sort of country do we have? One does not violate the law, yet everyone's sure they'll go to jail. How come? Is our state constitutional or not? The question is as follows, and no one understands it. Is there a deception or not? The rest doesn't matter. There is no deception, which means I can do whatever I want to. And okay, don't bring your money. Everyone is honestly warned of everything. I don't violate the law, so what's the problem here? In reality, MMM is good for a state. 
The government is silly, that's why it doesn't understand it. Because in particular, MMM relieves the social stress and the participants of MMM are happy and glad. They've got no protest moods. And at that, MMM doesn't require neither expenses nor any trouble. It grows very much like wild grass beside a fence. And everyone's glad and happy. In fact, should the government be smarter, it really should cherish us. When I came to the House of Russian Federation Parliament, the entire Duma turned to me to change their money. They all had played, but they did it anonymously. See, I had no need to talk to any high officials. Was there an opportunity to come to terms? Would they come to an agreement? That's unlikely, because I had threatened the very existence of the system. I had been repeatedly invited to Kremlin, but I didn't turn up. So they invited you to Kremlin? Yes, they had invited me for private talks. What especially works great is the appeal from the government to not join. Once someone from official says that, the influx of people is counted in crowds. Is it true that from the funds of MMM, you didn't spend anything on yourself? Yeah, only on basic essentials, and it's a downright truth, because it was said in the indictment. And of course, investigators, when writing the indictment, tried to use anything against me, any negativity they could come up with. So, yeah, I'd spend only on basic essentials, because I live the quiet life. I've been to a restaurant only once in my life. Wait, didn't you want to live a good life? But what does a good life mean? Maybe living with books is a good life. Right, you are answering your own question. Everyone has their own idea about what's good. I felt quite comfortable. There is absolutely nothing in the world that could attract me, that I would desire or wouldn't have. So I just live the way I like to. Yachts, houses, women, uh, restaurants. Well, there's no problem with women. Yachts and houses within reasonable limits. What I really love in my life is fishing. The rest, I don't want anything. In the sense that I have everything I want. Again, should I have all these billions tomorrow? My life wouldn't change whatsoever. I would wear the same sweatpants as in 94 because I feel comfortable in them. I would have the same furniture and the same lifestyle. Well, nothing would change, absolutely nothing except having more trouble. I'm looking at your sweatpants and I have heard that once when you decided to go to Kremlin, you wore a training suit. Yeah, of course. Seriously, no kidding. Who did you have a meeting with in a training suit? Ah, oh, forget it. Was it the big shot? Yes, the assistant of Yeltsin. Did he think you were mad when he saw legendary Mavrodi? Quite the other way around. Everyone came running to stare at me. I guess they took it as a deal. And there would be more wonder if I turned up in a regular suit. But I was supposed to be a genius to them. What's your attitude towards money? Nothing. It's just nothing but scraps of paper. Money is just paper. What else should I feel? I read this from your website about why all over the world pyramids are being fought against. And you say because pyramids make money. Yep, that's true. Money out of nothing. Out of thin air. That's right, money is made only out of air. Money is made out of only out of air. I'm citing Sergei Pintulevich Mavrodi. When everything's available, nothing is desired. There at the top is nothing, just vacuum. But to understand this, one has to climb there. I have and I've learned. Yes, there is vacuum, indeed. I've heard that you have no photographs at home, including ones from your childhood. Yes, that's true, I've got no photographs of myself. Why? I don't care about this. The past doesn't exist to me. Honestly, I don't concern myself with it at all. What's gone is gone. Only forward. Why to pump oil if we can pump money? If the growth rate stays the same, money comes in in such amount that we can't keep up with counting it. Then in a month and a half, Mavrodi will have one-fourth of the country's money turnover. Russia has a unique chance to turn from the West's raw materials supplier into the world financial center. I see a downright genius sitting right in front of me. I'm not even embarrassed to say this, because I really think so. I rather consider myself not a genius. That's not the right term. Genius is the best among equals. 
and I consider myself the only one, just like a beetle in an anthill. I'm a messiah, I'm changing the world. My role is to merely advise. Actually, in Greek, Mavrodi means the dark. The truth is that so far I help people and do good. What's your attitude to oligarchs, the billionaires? Utterly negative. Because in my view they are harmful. And I want to emphasize, not all of them, but the Russian ones. See, the situation is, our country is in the hands of crooks and swindlers, nowadays called the oligarchs. Which means the state property was given away to a bunch of people that took possession of it. I think it's absolutely immoral. I wanted to interfere in this process. This is why MMM was created, which accumulated funds and was the only player that could stop this. Can one make an honest fortune in Russia? First, it's all correct that you say a person has to work. I agree, but one must do so in a fair society. And the society is deeply unfair. Who does one have to work for? for oligarchs? Who do they work for now? And why do we have a situation when some individuals have billions and others have nothing? Now go ahead and tell that people have to work. Say it to Abramovich, they probably labored a lot. And say it to people who've labored all their life and received retired pay of $100, who've been literally dumped. That's the reality, whether you like it or not. It's just the way it is. Okay, I will tell who stays behind me, I want to fess up. Martians stay behind me. And still, who benefits from the reincarnation of the new MMM, the new life of these three letters? Martians. I'm not riding the hat, don't bring money to me. Keep that in mind. What else is there to warn about? I've got 12 brain concussions. Behind all this are the real deeds. It shouldn't be taken as nonsense. It should be thought over as why it is not. A commanding officer of an assault battalion in Afghanistan, who had personally shot down children and women as hostages, and who you've stayed in one prison cell with, said that he's never seen in his life a tougher man than yourself. Yes, I don't know what he meant. I didn't ask him. But he really said that. Absolutely amazing. Served a term, being cornered, deprived of property, convicted, fined billions by the court. Against all lords literally from a cave in a training suit. It is safe to say that he declares war on the authorities of this world. I fear nothing whatsoever. Come on, you're not afraid of going to jail for the second term? No, I act the way I consider necessary and come what will. And what am I supposed to go to jail for? I don't break laws. Some would say, you really think you're gonna walk from Moscow to Berlin? And Drukov says, yes we are. And you would say, you're mad. Did you see the army? But he says, let's do it. We'll make it in a year, we'll do so in two. Won't make it in three years and five will be there. Then he walked into Berlin, turned around and said, how do you like this? So you never know what you can till you try. Again, there must be set a mission. You have to fight for your people and their good life. And the army that should fight is these good-for-nothing lazy bones in the White House and Kremlin. See what I'm saying? What do you think? How many people trust Mavrodi? The result is 92% of our listeners. I wanted to say 90. But you were afraid to believe that. 92% of our listeners trust Sergei Mavrodi. I'm a thousands manager. I participate in MMM 2011 since the beginning of September. What you see in my hands is my salary for three months of work. For October, November and December. Today is the 20th of January. Here I have four wards. $10,000 each in hundreds and fifties. And who do you believe, live people or the corrupt mass media, make your choice all over the continents, in Europe, Asia, America, Africa and even Australia. We are now more than 30 million participants. Tens of thousands join our system daily and here we have not only Russia but also Germany, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Belarus, Israel, Thailand. They've been saying that we are few in number, that we wouldn't be able to gather a rally of thousands. They've been lying to us, haven't they? Yes! Remember, together we can do a lot and we are changing this world!
We can do a lot. We can do a lot. We can do a lot. Thanks to all of you. Can you see the new look better? Because the road appears under the steps of a walking one.